Hi everyone, I am Rajesh Kumar. I am having close to 16 plus years of experience in DevOps, SRE and DevSecOps. I have worked with more than 12 software organizations around the globe. I would like to introduce you all a DevOps School's a flagship certification program in DevOps, SRE and DevSecOps. Uh, this program will get started in the weekends. Uh, so get involved. Uh, please contact us on the phone number given on the screen. And in fact, you can email us on, on the contact at the rate of DevOps School. So how to search and techniques of search and all. There's no data right now. Okay? Now, so we'll have to feed it. So now the question is, where is the index? So you should go here and all these admin options will find it. Okay. So indexes are here. And right now one index which I said, <clears throat> sorry, which is the main index named with the main. <clears throat> so here it is. Okay, there's another index also which you see is for the running the different different sort of specifications. Now, what to do? So basically, you have to add a data. So if you see that here, look at this. Add and forward data to Splunk. So there's a many ways to add the data. How do we add the data? So basically, you can add the data. That means Splunk will take the data from the cloud computing also, networking also, operating system also, Linux or uh, security also. These are the sources available. So if you see that here, collecting the data. So these are the, so these are the API call actually it will have. These all are API. So for this, for API call, you don't need a forwarder. Okay. Your operating system. So Windows events, you have to configure it, Windows event. Now, here, this is the something. Uh, this is just a quick widget. If you want to upload the data, you can do that. <clears throat> if you want to monitor some data on the live and fetch the data, that is also do that. So in this case, what will happen? Your Splunk instance will directly run some script and get it done. And this is what I was talking about, setting up the forward. Okay, so you can get the data through any ways. So here, how to set up a forwarder that I'm going to teach you now. So that I'll show you in some time. Now, if you see that here, many options are there. And here also add the data, same thing, you will get it here. So get comfortable. Now, if you want to control, if you want to share the Splunk uh, access with some more people, then you have to create a user's rules and all this stuff. That I don't think so will be that challenging now because you have got comfortable with many other tools like that. Okay, so now what to do? So we have to set up a forwarder. So <clears throat> I'm setting up the forwarder. Uh, in the same machines. Okay. So here you can see that added data, select the forwarder. Right now, if you see that here, there is a no, there are currently no forwarders configured as a deployment. So that means there's no forwarders installed. So what we'll do, I'm going to install the forwarder in the same machine under the OPT location. So this was the last forwarder which I had it. I'm going to rename it to this. And this is the packet which I'm going to extract. So here, that. Okay, so this extraction has happened. Now, as per the image, uh, As per the image, so as per the image, the this is a indexer and this is a search head, and we are this one. This is us. So we connect to the search head, and search head talk to the indexer. So these two is in the same package we are using Splunk same package 
Now this I have to tell heap forwarder, universal forwarder, take the, collect the data from some files or some source, okay, and do one thing, send to this indexer. So this, this setup I'm doing right now. Are you comfortable with it, all of you? All of you? Yeah. Hello. Okay, great. So now I'll share with you some notes also for that. So when you want to set up later on, you can do that. So this is a heavy forwarder not required today. Uh, this is the universal forwarder I needed today. So universal forwarder is a lightweight agent. Heavy forwarder is a heavy agent, which will do the parsers, parsing also. So now these are the locations where you can download the forwarder. I did it already. Now guys here, understand that uh, anyways, this session is recorded. So this instruction you have to follow. Official documents, you can also check it out, but it's time consuming. So you have to allowed port specification of Splunk server. So here, uh, I think these are the open ports. So what I did, I think I disabled all the firewall. So if you are not disabling, you have to allow this one. So system CTL stop firewall D. I'm doing it just for so you should focus on the learning rather than getting lost in the ports and all. But disable this. Now, after that, what you need to do, uh, in order to set up a forwarder, what you have to do, you have to go to the setting, you have to go to the monitoring console, and then you have to go to the setting, and then click on the forwarder monitoring setup, and then enable the forwarder monitoring. So by default, it's not enabled actually, so you have to enable it. So can we do this forwarder monitoring enabling things? It'll, so go to the setting, which is here, after that, you have to go to the monitoring console, which is here. You can see that here. The monitoring console setting. So go to this here. Monitoring console. And the monitoring console, this this place, uh, the all the forwarders will be monitored actually. It could be heavy forwarder. It could be universal forwarder, the other one which I'm doing. And here you have a lots of uh, data for the monitoring forwarder. This is the self machine so that is the see here is a enterprise server itself Stand. so i'll go to the setting and click on the mon forward monitoring setup and here i'll say hey uh, forwarder monitoring is disabled by default i have to enable it let it be 15 minutes the data will be collected on every 15 minutes so we'll have to wait for the data to come for 15 minutes so that's okay you can set more also but it's not good practice to set up uh, early so that's okay. save it continue so first option you have to do this one after that you have to enable the port on which the uh, the port some port here on which the forwarder will send the data so how do you do that so for that again again you come back to this notes and then you have to do this this one setting forwarders and receiving receive data add new port listen on the port number so by default the port number is 997 okay on which the forwarder i mean splunk server will receive the the log okay so go for setting forwarder and receiving so go to setting and here you have a forwarder and receiving where here it is Okay, now after that, you have to go receive data, add new. So receive data, which is here. And here you can put the add new on the receiving. So add new. And the port number is 997, which is a default and save. That's all. So that means on this port, uh, the forwarder will send the data to the Splunk and done after this you have to restart the splunk instance okay so how do you do that through the without command line so go to the setting server control and restart the splunk so come to setting 
and server control which is here and click on the restart so these are the steps you have to do if you want to use the forwarder are you comfortable with it so far hello guys are you there yes yeah that so now admin password rajesh 123 so guys my splunk is there and ready to set up a forwarder after that what you have to do you have to come back and set up the forwarder so this is a little uh, something which you need to focus on so i have downloaded the forwarder again uh, already and extracted it which is here this is the new forwarder instance so i'm not using the old one okay so after this what you're going to do is uh, these are the commands you see to start the forwarder stop the forwarder restart the forwarder now first time when you starting it please accept the license okay so that is something which you have to do that so can we do that so i am running this command so clear the screen go to the bin directory and here splunk start accept license enter now here uh, for the forwarder also you can set up a username so in future if you want to access the forwarder you have to keep that so i'll just keep the same name same user it's not a it's not a password for uh, um, password for spunk server it's for the forwarder if you want to access it admin or rajesh 123 rajesh 123 that now here if you see that checking the prerequisite checking the management port 8089 not available so this is a concern for me i'm wondering uh, why it is not available so i think 8089 uh, the port is being should be open so this is not open so maybe some other forwarder is already running i need to check that so here it's saying hey port is already bound plus splunk needs to use this port would you like to change this port so right now i don't want to change the port so i'll say no i'll just check that who who is using the 8089 so let me see that grab this um and here if i see that mm, mm, so let me query this so net stack will spin Here, net stat is not there. So, now we install net stat. What is the utility? So, utility is net tools. So, these are the things you can take it as a like a troubleshooting skill set. So, some problems you may have. You can use other machines also. There I can install the powder, but I'm curious which is consuming. Yeah. So just wait for a few seconds more.
If you would have any issues with our channel membership, you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries. We will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching.